Dear friends, we are all used to people asking many types of questions and we keep answering them. Certain questions can be answered individually while some can be responded collectively as well. Today I have come to you with a question and that is what is your life? It's a very personal question. In the book of James chapter 4 verse 14 says, What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Friends, it clearly states the shortness of life and the way it gets out of our hand within a short span of time. We have no hold over it absolutely. Isaiah says, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. In verse 24 we see, For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall. The word of our God stands forever. The Lord's answer makes clear that it is not just grass and flowers that are short-lived. All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flowers of the field. And to make clear that all flesh includes human flesh, the Lord tells us in verse 7, Surely the people are grass. It reminds us of how perishable we are compared to His unchanging and everlasting nature. Not only do our lives wither like grass, so also our beauty, our wealth, our possessions, our achievements, and so much of what we pursue in life will soon fade like flowers and pass away. It is surprising and wonderful to read in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 1 that God means to comfort us with these words. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. The withering effects of our own flesh, the experience of watching friends and loved ones who were once strong and beautiful wither away and die. And the reminder that much of what takes our time and labor in this life will likewise perish is what makes the everlasting nature of God's word so comforting. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 to 18, the afflictions of this life are light and momentary. They are also like grass that will soon fade away. And for those who are trusting in the living word of God, these afflictions will ultimately give way to an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparisons, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Here the scripture is raising an important question to us. Where is your life? Is it rooted in God or in the junks of this world? What is entertainment when you have lost the joy of living in the Lord? Jesus died to bring us life. Life is about cleansing each moment, dwelling on the Word and enduring each moment. We confess our sins. After that, our life doesn't change. You can't face the one who has wronged you. You cannot stand the one who has gone ahead of you in life. You cannot be happy at the progress of the neighbor and finally have a life of discontentment. All for Jesus, all my thoughts run towards Jesus, all my actions, all that I am is for Jesus, and you are not awakened up to the life in Jesus, but you live in a system that is corrupt. Don't you see your life is sinking? If Christ is born in me, then he wants to live in me, walks with me, works with me, talk to me and be part of my life. And if I am in Christ, then I am a new creation and I get the new desire, new hope and the new life. 
that cannot be satisfied with the broken systems of this world. In 1st John chapter 5 verse 12 we see God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Friends, it is good to look at the relationship we have with God. What in Christ's name are we doing? Our situation isn't any better today. We have more darkness, we have more slums, we have more diseased, we have more poverty, more broken homes and lives. The world is looking forward to recovery. We have more sins and regrets. The negativity in progress. What is our education like? And where is it taking the young minds to? Is God part of their lives? Is God part of their faith journey? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The one place to get life is being in the presence of God. Without the path, there is no going. Without the truth, there is no knowing. And without the life, there is no growing. I am the way that is external. I am the truth that is internal. And I am the life that is eternal. Friends, as Christians, let us make our life to be our message to the world. Let us not look for the challenges of life, but the changes we can bring in life. Challenges will always be there, but the changes we make will transform the world into a better place for you and for me. Let us get intoxicated in the spirit of the Lord and not with the spirit of the worldly gems. May the spirit of God help us to articulate a life according to the call that we have received. Amen.